Welcome everyone, I'm Josh Washburn of Washburn Fabco and today we're going to be talking about replacing a liner in an end dump trailer. I haven't been very active on YouTube lately. For those of you that don't know me, I do Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and I actually injured my neck. So I wasn't working or training for about a month and then I got behind on work. So I didn't have any time to really make videos. I needed to catch up and get shit done. For this entire project, I only use two machines. These are both Arc Captain machines, and I was impressed with both of them on the job. This is a Arc Captain plasma cutter that they just sent me recently. I'm going to be doing a full review on this one here in the next week or two. Uh, I'm waiting for some consumables to come in. I ordered some off Amazon. They turned out not to be the right ones. So I'm waiting for the exact ones from Arc Captain to come in. And this machine over here is a TIG and Stick. 200 amp welding machine from Art Captain. I have a review on this machine and we're gonna be giving away one of these machines when we hit 1,000 subscribers. I was super impressed with this TIG 200. I stick welded this entire project. I ran 7018, 332nd rod, 1 8th rod, and 532nd rod with no problems whatsoever and it was hours and hours and hours of continuous welding. The only problem I did have which is user error. I melted my lead. Luckily, I got a bunch of stuff laying around. I just made another lead and got back to it. So at the time of recording this video, the project's already done. I didn't plan on making this video at first, and then I just decided it would be a good idea. Some of the videos I have are shot in a vertical form, and I apologize for it not being consistent throughout the whole video. So the project was on an end dump trailer. We relined 22 feet of it and we had to remove 22 feet of old liner. A liner is inside of your trailer to protect it from wear and tear over time. As rock slides out of the trailer when you're dumping, little bits of metal are worn down and eventually it'll wear down to nothing. So you put the liner in there to protect it from wearing out your actual trailer. All right, well, let's get into it. So here's a little walkthrough of the trailer that we took prior to making any repairs or doing any work. As you can see, there's a bunch of humps in here and old patches. A lot of those humps are due to cracking. So when it cracks, they're going to end up filling up with dirt, which makes the crack expand, and it just gets bad from there. So we have to go through and cut all of this out. We're only cutting out a 5-foot section because we're putting in 5-foot sheets, so we don't need to go all the way up to the walls. I didn't happen to get any videos of us actually tearing it out, but you can see how much dirt's underneath it here. We're only about... 10 feet of the way through. Here's the pile of steel that we had after we cut it all out. This was 3 16 plate and most of it was down to an eighth or only 16th. Once we got all the steel cut out that we needed to get cut out, we prepped all of our edges, tried to get rid of some slag. We had to use a drum sander to remove a large amount of dirt that was caked in. The upper portion of the liner that we left stuck out a good ways and there was quite a bit of gap. So we had to dog and wedge everything. Here's another couple looks at how big the gap was. Big enough to fit my hand in most places, except for the weld seams where the plates were originally welded together. Before we could proceed any farther, we had to get this old liner back welded down to the floor. We used the dog and wedge method. If you've never done that before, it's a lifesaver, but it's super, super time consuming as you can see here. If you're not familiar with the dog and wedge, I'm going to make a video, a how-to video of the basics of using a dog and wedge and how to make them and all that kind of stuff and probably put it in there, a CNC file for anybody who needs it. It's basically a way of manipulating your plate to lay flat. It works out really good. I mainly use it on heavy equipment stuff. Now that we got everything laying flat for the most part, I went back around and welded in between the stitches to completely seal it off. As you can see, I put a few more dog and wedges down throughout this process because some areas just didn't want to go. Others would go down fine with just a little beating from the hammer. With our new sheet dropped in there, we need to get this as flat as possible. We're going to use a couple different methods here. The first method we're doing here is just with a port of power, basically a hydraulic jack, and you weld a temporary beam in place across the trailer at the point to the top. Luckily, this one's got a rib across there, which was a good point where your welds aren't gonna be snapping if you barely tack it. You don't have to put much weld on there. You just gotta get enough to keep it centered in place. 
we had to do the dog and wedge method again along with temporary placements to get these angles right to press on the jack and as you can see this is a three by three quarter inch piece of square tubing and we're getting it to bow pretty darn far we also plasma cut a few holes in the center of this plate to hold it sucked down so that's what we're doing here is trying to get all those holes fully smashed down once they're as flat as possible you can plug weld it we had to keep moving around on all these holes it was bowing a little too much it was getting kind of sketchy so i took another piece of that three by three quarter inch tubing tacked it to the top for a little bit of reinforcement we put it in an angle like this because that a diamond shape it's a little bit stronger and can bow less now that i have it tacked in place i'm going around it and fully finishing to weld it out Cody's grinding off some of the old welds from the dog and wedge and from the 3x3 three three that we had tacked up there. The first 10 feet was pretty much done. Here's a close up of some of them 7018 welds. This is going to be butted up to another sheet so you're never going to see it again and there's going to be a cap over it. This gives you another look at what I was talking about, about having holes cut into it. Those holes are so you can plug weld it when you get it pressed down. Now that we've got our second sheet laid in there, I tack weld one side so that it doesn't slip and slide around when you start jacking it down. And we also use a 3x3 on the bottom of the jack to help distribute the weight a little bit better than just the head of the jack itself. Pretty much the same process before, more dog and wedging. We've got our other sheet in here. I'm going ahead and uh, finishing out the welding on it right now. This project was a lot, a lot of welding. Anytime you do these liners, it's a lot of welding. This total job took in between 30 to 40 pounds of 7018 rod, which is quite a bit. If you're curious, I used 1 8th for the root and 5 32nd for all the cap passes. Here's Cody trimming off the excess of our final sheet back here so that I can weld it out. And right here, I accidentally laid over my lead on the edge of a weld I just did, so I had to go make another. One of my good buddies made me that leather hood drape that I'm wearing here. How to make it so it can block out the sun and it's got snaps on it so it's removable. It worked out pretty good. He's gonna be doing custom orders and such here pretty soon. I'll link his Instagram in the description if anybody wants anything ordered. He does a lot of iron worker stuff. Here's the next day. I went through and put a cover pass on that first sheet that we dropped in. It's kind of weird the way it lays over when you have an old liner that you're sticking it to in between so I left a little bit of a gap there so I had to go back in and fill over this gap if I was just doing a liner from scratch on a trailer that didn't have a liner at all you can do it in one pass probably with 532nd rod doing it with a liner that's already been in there is a little bit of a harder job than without having a good fit up will make any job so much easier Right here, when I was cutting with the plasma, I just got a little off track, so I had to put a few more passes in there to completely fill up the gap that needed to be filled. If you're doing one of these liners, you want to make sure that you don't have any divots or valleys in your weld seams, because you want the material to just flow right over the top. So I just wrapped up uh, putting a cover pass on all this. There's some spots like I'm going to go back into and put another pass over um, because there was a wider gap between the old plate and the new plate. Here's a final look of the 22 foot of liner installed. These were the plug welds I mentioned earlier right here. It's a little rusty because it's getting a little dewy out here in the mornings. We do a lot of repairs on end dump trailers so if anybody's looking to have a liner installed or any other kind of work on any heavy equipment really feel free to message me you can message me through facebook instagram or directly through my website it'll be linked in the description look through my link tree and you will see all of that info in there and that pretty much wraps it up for this video if you're interested in buying one of these machines i got a 10 percent off discount washburn fabco at checkout it'll also be a link in the description hopefully this video helps somebody out that's trying to do something similar for a hobbyist, I would say it's a little too much of a project. But if you think you could do it, give it a shot yourself. Don't forget, we're giving away this machine. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching.